Okay. This is Zoom Ahmed for IFL TV and Association of MTK Global via Zoom. I'm joined by Bob Aram. How are you doing? Good, really good, really good. My first day back in the office in months. I mean, and that's very unusual for me. I, you know, uh, the only time I'm not in the office is when I'm traveling. Uh, but I've had two months hunkered down, and uh, so it's it's nice to be back. Yeah, we know there's some great news regarding yourselves and top rank. Uh, you're the first guys bringing boxing back, uh, which is uh, great news. And we'll come on to that later. But I think there's one place to start only, Bob. And unfortunately, that's with a, with a negative story. Um, we saw that horrific video um, with George Floyd. Um, and it's nothing new with the police force and uh, African-Americans, unfortunately. Um, within the United States. Just your thoughts on the incident and everything that's occurred since, Bob. Well, it's horrific, and I agree. And a lot of it has to do with training. Uh, too often, uh, we recruit people to police forces around the country, and we teach them this and that, but we don't teach them uh, that they have to be caring and not cruel. Uh, I mean, being a policeman is a difficult, difficult job. And only when uh, they get trained properly will we uh, really uh, get fewer and fewer incidents like we had with George Floyd. It is a recurring problem, and it'll only be fixed uh, when the police are properly trained. We know racism's always uh, existed, um, and you know one would like to think it's got better over time um, in certain parts of the world. Um, but we keep seeing these incidents, um, unfortunately, in America. Do you think there's hope with this, Bob? Do you think this, this will ever change? Yeah, there will, it'll change. It won't change overnight. It'll change uh, if people uh, of uh, the right uh, type of, um, uh, of uh, a character and people who believe in the rule of law and believe in everybody's opportunity uh, to um, uh, to uh, live life peacefully and so forth are able to do so. But again, again, I think most people are horrified with what happened to George Floyd. And that's not enough. I think uh, you have to do something about it. And one of the things that you can do is police education, police methods, so we diminish down to virtually nothing these incidents happening. A lot of it seems to be racism and probably is, but some of it, most of it is not. Most of it is lack of good police training. All right, but well, I don't want to dwell on the situation too much because it obviously, as I said, it is it's quite a depressing story. Um, let's talk some boxing. As I said, uh, you're bringing boxing back, the, the first organisation to do so. Um, just uh, tell me how the run, run me through how these events are going to work, Bob. Obviously, we know there's going to be no fans there. But in terms of the rest of the production, the camera crews, um, the ring card girls, the media, etc., attending from the United States, how is this all going to work, Bob? Okay, first of all, everybody has got to be tested. So when the fighters come in, they will be tested. There's a area that they can sit. The test will take about an hour, wait for the result. And eventually it'll cut them down to about five or 10 minutes, but right now it's about an hour. They'll get the results. They'll be escorted to their rooms, which will be on a separate floor at the MGM. It will be the bubble. They will stay in that bubble 
They will train at the hotel. They will eat in a designated restaurant at the hotel. And then uh, either at the weigh-in or probably the day of the fight, they'll be tested again, just to be sure. And that test will be for the fighter. And each fighter can have two corner men. They'll be tested. And we are providing two very distinguished, able cut men at our expense, which the fight corners will be able to use if one of the two corner people is not a cut man. And then as far as the other people in the room, it will be the referee, the judges, the commissioners, the inspectors, the doctors, all of whom will have been tested prior to the event to get into the room. And that includes any of the top ranked staff. As far as the camera crew, this will be uh, ESPN uh, crew uh, for the telecast. And we've worked together with Disney on their protocols. And they will be in the bubble from the time they get there, will be tested the day of the event. And uh, Disney, is ESPN is talking about keeping the crew together at least two months in Las Vegas, in the bubble, continued testing, and uh, the fight will be held in this big convention area room uh, at the MGM, which will be set up and maintained for at least two to three months where we'll have these events taking place. Uh, and uh, uh, any, everybody who will be in that space will have been tested. Now that means that we excluded the media uh, for the first week because you know we have so much to do. We're not experts. We're trying to do this thing right and completely safe. And by the second week, we'll allow a few media in and gradually we'll expand it. Our idea is that we will be doing these events two to three a week uh, in throughout the summer. That means June, July, and August. And we hope by September, we'll be able to do fights in arenas and stadium where we limit the number of fans who will be able to watch in person. Uh, I think that's uh, the, that's sec what we call second phase, and hopefully we'll start that in September. And then what we're hoping for, but we don't know, is that uh, November, December, or worst case, early next year, we can do events where fans can sit next to each other, just like we did before uh, we closed everything down. So I understand uh, Shakur Stevenson is going to be kicking off your schedule. Yeah, it's sort of interesting because he's in with a Puerto Rican kid who's a really big puncher and big knockout guy. That's an interesting fight. And uh, the guy who beat Shakur in the Rio Olympics uh, is going to be on the card in a separate fight. So that would be interesting. We have two big heavyweights who will be fighting uh, against other opponents, good opponents. Uh, one is Vianello, uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the Italian uh, policeman, who's coming along really well. And then uh, Jared Anderson, who really is the unsung hero behind uh, Tyson Fury's defeat of Wilder because Jared Anderson 
was the main sparring partner. And uh, Tyson told me uh, that he had, Jarrett did a big, big role in preparing Tyson uh, for the fight that he did against Wilder in February. Bob, um, whether it's you guys or whether it's uh, Fox and PBC putting shows on, of course, some of the fights get picked up here in the UK by either Sky or BT. Not all of them. But at the moment, we will take anything. You know, we're star for content. So have UK broadcasters such as Sky and BT reached, about, reached out to you about um, putting these fights on in the UK, televising them? I, I, think, I think we've done that. And uh, uh, hopefully... Uh, we've been able to uh, connect uh, with a broadcaster in the UK. We don't need a lot of money for these shows, uh, but we want to be, for the boxing fans that want to see live boxing, these shows are interesting and they'll get more interesting as the weeks go on because uh, the second week we have uh, uh, you know, great lightweights like Pedraza fighting uh, in tough fights. Uh, then the third week, uh, oh, at, we have the Maloney twins who made it out of Australia, one of whom will be defending his world title. Uh, so that's interesting. Uh, on Saturdays, we're going to do events uh, starting not this not uh, the uh, 13th, but the 20th from Mexico. We're going to, uh, Navarrete, who can't get into the United States now because of this coronavirus, will be fighting in Mexico City. And then we'll have uh, Burchell, another one of our fighters, a terrific 130 pounder who will be facing off later this year against Valdez, uh, will be on that card. And then we have Munguia. Uh, top middleweight uh, from Mexico who will be on one of the cards. So we'll be doing uh, two and three events every week. Uh, and uh, in July, when MTK gets into action, we'll be picking up uh, MTK events that will be shown on ESPN+. Plus. Bob, what's the situation with Inoue and Casemiro? Well, we've been we talking with our colleagues uh, in uh, in Japan, uh, uh, both Honda and Ohashi, the manager of Inui. Uh, we're trying to arrange when we can get Inui over here. Travel restrictions are a bitch to go around, and we would like him to be here. Uh, in September, because then we could do his event with Casemiro with a limited audience, because he's so popular with Japanese and Japanese Americans that we, you know, I'd like to put it in an arena where we open it for maybe 2,500, 3,000 people spread out, and we'd get a lot of. Uh, I mean, there'd be no problem with selling tickets for that. And we're going to do, hopefully do the same, similar thing uh, with the Loma and Lopez, uh, which we're scheduling for September. Okay, so that fight is on, because I spoke to Tiafimo Lopez a couple of weeks ago, and he said that he believes that fight with Lomachenko won't happen. Well, you know, fighters are fighters. They, they really, they're not in the weeds like we are, figuring out why the fight isn't happening. The one thing I must say is when I talked to Loma and I talked to Lopez and suggested, since the fight won't happen until September, to give them each an interim fight, they both rejected it. They both said, we want to fight the other guy and we don't want to... Uh, do interim tune-up fights. Bob, I read some quotes online today um, from yourself that it looks like Fury Wilder 3 is going to be set for November, December. Is that accurate? Yeah, because, I mean, 
it's too early to do it in October. We've talked with the PBC guys. We've had a great relationship with them. We're all working together. So we're looking for November, December. I hope that it'll either be uh, uh, in the United States, if we can do it for full stadium, which probably won't be the case, but we have uh, uh, it being reviewed in Macau now, where the properties in Macau would put up the money to do the fight, and the government is considering whether to allow it uh, in November or December with a full audience. Right? And also, our friends in Australia are talking about doing that fight over there because they're convinced that because they've handled the coronavirus outbreak so well, that they'll be up and running with full stadia uh, as early as November, December. So that's what we're considering. You know, it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not just, you know, the old days, you look around, you get a date, you make a deal, and you put the fight on. We have a lot of, it's a little bit more complicated now. Say you can't get a full crowd in, uh, in Las Vegas by November, December, do you completely rule out the U.S. then, and, it, and then it's either China or Australia? No, we're not going to Listen, I'm bound and determined. I told Tyson that we're going to do that fight November, December. He said he was fine with that. Wilder is fine with that. One way or the other, I'm going to get it done. What would you say the percentage chance is that it goes to Macau, Bob? I don't know. They're very interested. They're very interested. I think the only impediment now is will they open? There's, this, there's an arena there that seats about 10,000 where they had the Asian game. Beautiful arena on Kota. And the question is will they allow us to do an event filling up because you have to do, you know. And we have all indications that the Chinese government, the government in Macau, that, you know, is appointed by Beijing, will uh, give us the go-ahead to, to, to put it on. And then every one of the properties in Macau have tentatively agreed to put up the money to make it happen. What about Joshua Poole? Have you spoke to Eddie Hearn recently about that, Bob? Yeah, we've been. Eddie is was reluctant to look into Croatia because it didn't seem to be the most uh, appetizing place to do the fight. What he told me is that if he can't do it for spectators, uh, he's still willing to do it in the UK, and uh, he thinks that. Uh, by September, we'll be able, he'll be able to do fights in the UK, again, like the ones that we would be doing here, where you space out the people in a big arena and say he would do it in a Royal Albert Hall, which he mentioned to me, and set it up for 2,000 people. And you, because it would be a premium, and it'd be sort of like an honor to be there, you, you could charge big ticket prices. Yeah. Any updates on uh, Terence Crawford, Bob? Well, yeah, we hope we get Crawford and, uh, uh, and uh, Pacquiao in action uh, this year. And uh, through our friends uh, at MDK, we are in serious talks with Bahrain for doing major fights there uh, with the, uh, the, the Sheikh's company uh, that's involved in boxing. And MTK is carrying the big laboring ore, but we put out a release today that we're behind that, we're agreeable with it. And I'd love to do some big, big events in Bahrain. 
is it looking likely then that Crawford Pacquiao goes to Bahrain, Bob? Well, let's see what happens. I mean, let's see what happens. Everything is likely. Everybody wants to do these events until the time comes for them to put up the money. But I think with Bahrain, we have a good shot to get it done. Let me just read you a quote from Errol Spence today, Bob. Let me just get it up. Okay, this is what Errol Spence said. I'm always going to... No, sorry. This is what Errol Spence said. I don't need no tune-up, nothing. I'm a shark, so put me in deep water where I belong. My realistic goals are Danny Garcia, Manny Pacquiao and Terence Crawford. I don't want to leave 147 pounds without fighting Terence Crawford. Thoughts? You know, one thing with Errol Spence is a very good fighter is he's talking without regard for who's going to pay for it. In other words, if he fights Danny Garcia, you know, he wants a, a real truckload of money uh, and Garcia wants to get paid a lot of money. Now, who's going to put up the money? Well, you say Al Heyman. Well, if Heyman, you know, wants to be a masochist, he'll do that fight because they'll end up lo losing a ton of money. And that's got to stop. I mean, you know, I'm happy to do a Spence Crawford fight, but I know what each guy is demanding. And I would say, you know, if you think you're worth that, take a modest guarantee, each of you, and fight for the upside. That's what Muhammad Ali used to do. I mean, give me a break. Why should the promoter take this crazy risk of paying each guy $8 million or $9 million? Where is it coming from? I mean, these fighters haven't shown themselves to be huge pay-per-view drawers. They just haven't. You know, if you're dealing with a Canelo, well, Canelo has a track record because of the Mexican-American fan base uh, of doing big pay-per-view numbers. But these other guys don't, don't have, a, don't have uh, a track record for that. And also, they, you got to take into to, to, to what the situation is. I mean, you know, we have 40 million people in the United States out of work. Well, are, are people who are out of work going to buy the pay-per-view? I mean, of course not. And then, you know, people who bought the pay-per-view in the past uh, made parties in their homes, and they had like 10 people watching it. Well, not many people are going to want to bring that many people into their homes now with the coronavirus still lurking around. So, you know, everybody kind of come to their senses. Uh, and I think they will. But again, one thing at a time, you can't just make fights without trying to figure out how you're going to pay for it. Coming on to the heavyweight division, any updates on Gerald Miller, Bob? Yes, he's going to go um, uh, in July. He's scheduled to go in July. He, I saw the card. He's going to have a pretty good fight in July. He's scheduled to go in July, another heavyweight of ours. Rivas, the, the Canadian, is making filing papers to come into the country, United States, because there's a border control now. And uh, better be off the light heavyweight, same thing. But that's probably not going to happen until uh, August. In other words, we got to proceed. You can't just rush in and do, got to get the fighters over here, and, you know, and, and uh, that's what we're trying to do. What about your UK and Ireland guys, such as Josh Taylor and Mick Conlon, Carl Frampton? Have you spoken to Frank Warren about essentially when these guys could get out in the UK and Ireland? Yeah, well, Frank is going to get back to us uh, once he's up and running. We got to get a fight for Frampton, a fight for Taylor. And we'll put in some money from the U.S. Be, fights will be shown in the U.S. 
in an, in an, on the in an afternoon because it'll be evening in uh, in the UK, and uh, I hope to get uh, Mick Conlon back in action, Frampton and Josh Taylor, because I still believe we'll be able to do uh, a Josh Taylor Ramirez fight before the end of the year. That'd be a major fight, uh, and. Uh, Herring will be fighting a different opponent on July 2nd, 4th of July weekend. And uh, uh, if he comes through with that, he wants to go against Frampton uh, later in the year. Uh, so I want to get Frampton a fight before that. Uh, and uh, uh, that's what we're doing with all of them. Mick Conlon, I know, wants to fight for a title this year. I don't know whether that'll be possible, but certainly early next year, and we've got to get him back in action, but probably the best place for it with the travel restrictions is for Frank to get it done in Belfast. Well, Baron, well, I won't keep you much longer. Um, thank you for, for bringing boxing back first, and uh, we look forward to your shows uh, in the summer, and then, of course, kind of the bigger ones moving on from September. Thanks for songs to IFL CV. Is there anything you'd like to add, Bob? No, just, um, you know, it's been a long battle, but we finally see the light of day. Uh, and we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We'll be back in action strongly in June, starting June 9th. Uh, hopefully, uh, the Brits, uh, Frank and Eddie, will be back in action in July. I know Al Heyman is talking about uh, starting to do fights in July and Oscar probably in August. Uh, so uh, before you know it, we'll be back. We'll be back strangely at first with no spectators and then with a scattered number of spectators and then before you know it, with sold out venues, with thousands of people screaming, yelling, and having a good time. So I, you know, it's one step at a time. Uh, boxing, well, we've never seen anything like this, but boxing has seen uh, tough times before, and I'm sure it'll come back stronger than ever. Actually, just quickly before you go, what do you think of uh, Eddie Earn doing boxing in his back garden? Have you seen his idea? You, well, you know, depending on how big the backyard is, if it, you know, if it's a number of acres, uh, why not? Probably make a great, great setting uh, for it. You put the people up in a, I think it's in Essex, you put the people up in a local hotel, which is, serves as the bubble, you bust them to the fight. Uh, you put up some tents. I wouldn't allow it to be done in my backyard, but if Eddie and his father Barry think otherwise, uh, God, God bless them. Probably be a beautiful scene. All right, Bob. Thank you for your time. Take care. Okay. Good talking to you.